In this tutorial, I'll teach you how to create your own Excel files by using Python 3 and the XLSX Writer module. Hello humans, I'm Kyle and welcome to Code for Humans, the channel dedicated to leveling up your coding skills. In this video, I'll show you two different ways of writing data into cells, as well as showing you how to write formulas into cells, so let's hop right into it. Okay, so getting started, what is XLSX Writer? Well, it's the Python module we use to write Excel files. So just to point out, it only works for XLSX files. It is not designed to handle XLS files. So if that's what you're working with, you need to find a different module. But just like XLRD, it also must be pip installed. And the command for that is pip install XLSX writer. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with pip installations, I'll link you a video in the description with a guide on how to do that. But assuming you've done that and I already have, I'll say import XLSX writer and we are good to go. Okay, so to start, I'll show you what we're gonna make as an end product. So here on my desktop, I have business report. I can open this and you can see I have some headers, a bunch of dates, a bunch of numbers, and then everything in profit is a formula. So it's equal to revenue minus cost. So I'll be showing you how to write all of these things. So to start, we need to tell Python where we want to save the Excel file. So I'm going to say, and I'll copy this out of my notes to save us some time, that my path, I'll make a variable called path and set it equal to the path to my desktop. And then after that, I'll say the name of my file. I decided to call this business report dot XLSX. We have to include this extension or your file will not be able to be read from. So we now need to make the Excel workbook and worksheet. Um, if you're unfamiliar with that, I'll link you my last video in this series in which I talked about the differences between the two. I'll be making Excel workbook now, and I'll set that equal to XLSX writer. So I want to use a function out of this called workbook. This might be a class, but it's not really important. We only use it in this one line anyway. So we're going to pass it one thing. Where do we want to make the file? And that is that path. So once we've made that, we can add a sheet to that. So I'll say Excel sheet is equal to Excel workbook dot add worksheet. I want to add a worksheet to the Excel workbook I just made, and I'll call it Excel sheet. Uh, if you wanted to make multiple sheets, then you could do something like this, where I just copy this and give my second sheet a new name. Now this will be the second sheet. I'll actually show you this in just a second. So the last thing that you need to do after you're done writing your data is close the workbook. And we do that by saying Excel workbook dot close. This is essentially like the programming equivalent of saving and closing the file. This file will not be created until we say dot close. So very important that you remember to do that. First, I'll close this because if I try to recreate the file while it's open, I'll get an error. So I'll run my code. And if I pull open my desktop, you can see this has now been overridden. So what I had is now gone because you can see at 418, which is the current time it was uh, modified. So I'll open this and now I can see a blank sheet, but now I have two of them. That's how you make multiple sheets, but we're gonna be keeping things simple. I'm going to delete that and we'll just be using one sheet for this tutorial. So now that we've made our sheet, let's actually add some data to it. I'm going to say Excel sheet dot write, and I want to write at cell A1 and the information I want put there is the string date. So this will be my header. So the way the write function works is it's built into every Excel sheet and we can specify the cell we want to write information to and what information we want written there. So I'll do the, another example. So Excel sheet dot write at B1 and I'm going to say revenue. So this will be another one of our headers in our little table. So this notation, just saying like the actual name of the cell is nice when working with a few pieces of data, but when you want to write a bunch of things, it gets kind of troublesome to say a letter for the column instead of just a number. So we can actually just address the cell by X, Y coordinates. Let me show you what I mean. So I'll say Excel sheet dot write, and I want to write in row zero in column two. And there I'm going to say cost. So one thing I want to point out is we start counting at zero, even though Excel starts counting at one. So when I run this, it's going to look a little weird. It's going to look misaligned, but I'll show you the differences. So here we can see 
cost is written at C1. So this says row one, but it's actually row zero according to Python because we start counting at zero, this starts counting at one. So this is at a row of zero and then a column of two. So zero, one, two. And that's why we get cost at C1. So I'll just repeat this for our last header. I'll say at zero three, I want to write, I want to write profit. So this will handle all of our headers and you usually only have a few headers, but when we write data, we could potentially have, you know, hundreds of thousands of lines to write. And I don't want to have that many lines of code. So let me show you the solution to that. Okay. So before we get into that, I'm going to organize our code a little bit. I'll say write headers. And then here I'm going to say, uh, prepare data. So I'm going to make a bunch of lists that have all of my data in it, as opposed to just typing the, the data here. That would be kind of annoying. So I'll paste this in to save us some time. We have a list of dates, and this just has three strings holding dates in it, a list of revenues and a list of costs, which are all just integers. So I'm going to write a four line for loop, and it's going to print all this information into the appropriate cells. So the way we start that, is I'll say for i in range, the length of dates. So what we want to happen is for every date, I wanna loop one time. So I have three dates, which means length of dates is three. So my loop will loop three times and I'll say Excel sheet dot write i plus one at zero dates i. So what does this mean? So we are saying that we're going to keep increasing our row. And every time we do that, we're going to print something in the A column, the zero column, and that's going to be dates at I. So let's run this, that'll make things easier. So I'll run my code and open my file. And here you can see all of my dates are now in my Excel sheet. And the reason this works is because I starts at zero and we say to write something at zero plus one so this means we're going to be in row one. I know again, it's messed up for these labels, but we're going to be ignoring those. So at row one in column zero, so my first column, I wanna write dates at zero. So my first date, our loop repeats, I is one. We wanna write at one plus one. So now we're in row two at column zero and the second date in our list and so on. So that is how we get all of those dates. So I'll just do the same thing with revenues and cost, and then I'll be back with you. Okay, so here you can see, I pretty much did the exact same thing with revenues and cost. The only real difference is the column. So this is going to be in column one, this will be in column two. And if I open up our Excel file, uh, I ran this by the way. So our new file has revenue and cost generated just like this. So the last thing I'm gonna teach you is how to write formulas into cells. How do we calculate the profit to be equal to revenue minus cost. Okay, so before we solve this problem in Python, we need to solve it in Excel. How do I get profit to be equal to B minus C? So the way we do this is we say equal sign, the value of this cell is gonna be a formula, and that formula is B2 minus C2. Take the current row's revenue, subtract the cost from it, and that is the value of my cell. So 100 minus 50 is 50 and I'll drag this down, and now we can see the other cells now have this. The main difficult part of this is that from row to row, the values change. So here we have B2 minus C2, but here it changes, the twos go to threes. So that's the primary challenge, but uh, nothing we can't overcome. So what I'll do is I'll copy and paste this, and this is going to be in column three, the D column, and we'll figure out what we're gonna type here in a minute. But first, I'm gonna make a little comment that's gonna tell us our goal. So our goal is to equal sign B some number, which I'll call N minus C at some number. An example of this would be equal sign B2 minus C2. So that is our goal. And the way we can do that is take it bit by bit. Okay, so since equal sign B never changes, we can just type a string that says equal sign B. Now we need to deal with N. So the number that changes from row to row. And the way we can do that is by saying plus the string equivalent of I plus two. Well, why did I say plus two here? 
It's because of two things. One, because Excel starts counting at one and we start counting at zero. So we have a one misalignment there. The other problem comes from the fact that we don't start in the top left cell. We actually start one lower than that. So when I is zero, we're going to say add two to zero. So this will be B2. And that's exactly what we want, right? Because Excel shows this is row two. So that is how we adjust for the misalignment caused by the headers and by Excel starting at a different counting number than us. The rest of this is pretty easy. I'm going to say plus. So let's say we have B2 minus C. And then we just need to say two again. So I can actually just copy this little bit and say plus this. So now what's gonna happen is uh, the first time this runs, this will be equal to equals B2 minus C2. The next time it runs, B3 minus C3 and so on. And that's exactly what we want in these columns. So let's close this and run our code. And I'll pull up our output. And now we can see our cells are written properly. As always, a big thank you for liking, subscribing, and ringing that bell. Comment below with suggestions for future videos, and I will see you in the next one.